we'll begin the service today, we'll sing number 68, How Beautiful Heaven Must Be. that place we talk about that place and I know it'll be a wonderful and beautiful place for us all to spend eternity if we'll just put our trust and faith in the Lord I'll mention in the beginning of the service today that there's several men and women that have been working some on the hurricane relief and we'd like to have a meeting here with the male members, the adult male members of the church here Thursday night 
at 7.30 down in the educational building to just discuss these things and see how that we can help in any way. So if you would, just plan on anybody who's interested in that would like to talk about it, help organize it, you're welcome to be here at 7.30 down in the educational building Thursday night. We look at the natural things and we're ready to help. We're ready to do for our neighbors. We look at the spiritual things and are we ready to help? Are we ready to set forth the example and to put the name of Jesus out so that people can be able to hear and they can be able to understand what he'd have for us to do here on the earth so that we can have that eternal life. So I ask you this morning to let's all give our attention to him and let's look at what he'd have for us to do today that we might help someone on their way spiritually or might help someone on their way naturally, someone that's struggling, someone that is down. Let's just take our own individual condition to the Lord and let him then be the one that directs us and gives us knowledge and understanding. That should be our prayer each and every day. To Lord, give me the knowledge and understanding that you'd have for me to be able to use to promote your kingdom here upon the earth, to, pro to promote your will being done in me so that I might let that light shine and so that others may be able to see it and give you the honor and the glory for what a wonderful opportunity that we have. I wonder if we all really think about that enough. And to think about these things daily, hourly, as we go through the life, as we go through each day, Are we walking with Jesus? Have we come out today to sit here, to listen to his message, to act like that we are serving him, and then get up and go about our merry way throughout the week and not give it much thought at all, but to have our mind filled with the carnal things and to be seeking after that more than we have sought after the things of above, those treasures, those eternal treasures. I know we've talked a lot about that recently, about him, what he has said, seek ye first the kingdom above, and all of these other things will be added to us. Let's remember that, and let's put our faith and put our trust in him, Jesus Christ. Not in man, but put our faith there that what he has promised, he will do. The promises that he has made here in this book that we read about and we talk about are good. And they will come to pass. So let's put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ, our Lord that we all might stand with him. <coughs> Let's turn to Luke. That's where I... <coughs> the sixth chapter of Luke. <clears throat> I want to read just a few verses there in the fifth chapter of Luke. We'll start at the 36th verse there. 
And he spake also a parable unto them, No man putteth a piece of new garment upon an old, if otherwise then both maketh a, a, the new maketh a rent, and the piece that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And he's talking about there, he was giving them an example of what it is. When we become a new man, that you don't take that new man and try to mingle it with the old man, with the old spirit, with the wicked spirit. It will not work, he said. Just as in those days they took a garment there, they did not have thing, clothes there that had been pre-shrunk and all this type thing the, with the, the material that they might have. And if they put a patch in, on, a, on a garment there out of new material, then it would draw up and it would not look good. It would not, he says, it would make it to rent. And he says, the peace that was taken out of the new agreeeth not with the old. And I know that that's the way we need to be spiritually, friends. That we've got to have a new garment. We can't just take a piece and say, I'm going to hold on to the old. And I want to bring in a part of the new garment and try to mingle it together. It will not work. We've got to get rid of the old garment, that old spirit, that spirit that has been leading us through life in a way that was not accorded, according to the spirit of God. We came here with that spirit of Satan within us, and that's what he's saying we've got to get out and then make that, let that new spirit dwell within us and be whole, full of that. And no man putteth new wine into old bottles, else the new wine burst the bottles and be spilled, and the bottles shall perish. But new wine must be put into new bottles, and both are preserved. That new spirit coming into that new body, that new man. And then they're both preserved for eternity. What a wonderful thing to think about that we've got that opportunity today. But we've got to purge out the old man. We've got to do away with it. When that new spirit, when we take hold of that, then we then are ready to relinquish that old man. We are sick of that. We are tired of that old man. We do not want that anymore. But when that new spirit comes within us, then we are desiring to do the will of the Lord. We are desiring to walk with him. We are desiring to put away the things of this world and become new so that then we might be able to be preserved into eternal life. No man having drunk old wine straightway desireth new, for he saith the old is better. And that's what Satan will try to tell us. Satan will try to put that into your mind and try to keep you thinking that the old is a better way of life. You don't desire that new part, but once you get that spirit, once you have tasted of the truths of God, of the peace, of the hope, of the happiness that he has there, then you will want to be more and more and more involved in that new spirit. Is that in your life today? I want to ask you, are you excited about how you are spiritually are you excited about the way of the Lord walking and working within you today? If you're not, there's something wrong. We need to be filled with that and we need to be excited about the, what that Spirit can do for us and what it has done for us and how we can let that light shine. And it came to pass on the second Sabbath after the first that he went through the cornfields. And his disciples plucked the ears of corn and did eat, rubbing them in their hands. And certain of the Pharisees said unto them, Why do you that which is not lawful to do on the Sabbath day? The Pharisees there wanted to condemn his disciples. Here was the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, going around, going through the fields. His men, his disciples were hungered. And he had allowed them to take some of the things. First of all, he was bringing in the new law. And they took the corn, the wheat we would call it today, rubbed it in their hands to get the chaff off of it. 
and then they ate it. But the Pharisees looked upon that and tried to find something wrong with it. And today, there will be people that will try to look and to find something wrong with the work of the Lord wherever it might be. Try to destroy it. Try to say something against it so that it can tear down somebody's faith. And that's what these people were wanting to do here. But Jesus had an answer for them. And Jesus has an answer for us today if we'll just put it in. If we'll take everything to him. He has an answer to show us and to tell us how we should live our life. And Jesus answered them and said, Have you not read this? Have you not read so much as this? What David did when himself was unhungered and they which were with him. How that he went into the house of God and did take and eat the showbread and gave also to them that were with him which, which it is not lawful to eat but for the priest alone. And he said unto them that the Son of Man is Lord also of the Sabbath. And whatever the Son of Man agrees and whatever the Son of Man allows for us to do, that is okay. If it is not something that he is sanctioning, we'd better stand back. We'd better get away from it. But if the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, if he is sanctioning your work or my work, then let's follow on through with it. But let's be sure that it is him that is sanctioning and not just ourselves, that we are doing things to please the flesh and not to please our Lord and Savior. And it came to pass on another Sabbath that he entered into the synagogue and taught, and there was a man whose right hand was withered. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him, whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. But he knew their thoughts and said to the man which had the withered hand, Rise up, stand forth in the midst. Jesus Christ was very bold and he understood when it came time to be bold. He understood what the mind of the people were there, the scribes and the Pharisees, these self-righteous people. And that can be right among us if we aren't careful feeling like that we are more righteous than someone else that maybe the Lord is working with. Let the fruits be what we should be looking for. Is there fruits there? Are you following what the truths of the Bible says? And that's, the, that's what totally counts with all of us, friends. Are we following that? And are we following the Spirit of God? Not something that man has done, not something that we have gotten up in our own mind or that we have a desire for, but whether or not we are truly following the Spirit of God and being a part of the true spiritual church of Christ. That's what it takes for salvation. And the scribes and Pharisees watched him whether he would heal on the Sabbath day that they might find an accusation against him. And he went on and he told the man, rise up, stand forth in the midst of all of these people. I want this to be done. I want it to be done openly. And I want people to, be, to see that I am the son of God and whatsoever God gives me the answer to do, I will carry out those things. Then said Jesus unto them, I will ask you one thing, it is lawful on the Sabbath days to do good or to do evil, to save life or to destroy it. And I'd ask the same things with us today. Is it good for us? And let's, let's say on any day, it doesn't just matter about the Sabbath day with us. All days should be as the Sabbath with us. And he says, is it lawful on the Sabbath day to do good or to do evil? And I want to just put it this way. Is it lawful on any day for us? In our life, the way we are living under the law of grace today, is it lawful under the law of grace for us to do evil at any day? Is it lawful for us to do good every day? Yes. But it is nothing, not lawful for us to do evil <laughs> according to this law of grace, friends. And the same thing here, he says, is it to save life or to destroy it? Just look at what he's saying. He, he is just giving us the opportunity. 
You have an opportunity to do a good work or you have an opportunity to do an evil work. You have the opportunity to be filled with righteousness or you have the opportunity to be filled with unrighteousness. And looking around about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand, and he did so, and his hand was restored whole as the other. He knew that this man had a desire to be healed. Maybe the man had come there for that reason. Maybe he had come to hear the preaching of Jesus, but I know that he understood that there was people that were being healed by this man Jesus, and if he got in his presence, maybe he could be healed also. And Jesus understood that he had faith to be, to be healed. And he knows the thoughts and intent of every single person that's here today. It doesn't matter who you are, what your thoughts are in your mind. He knows and he understands why you have come out here today. Have you come out searching and seeking for help spiritually? Or have you just come out here as these Pharisees were in your self-righteous way? What is it with us today? Ask yourself that question. Have I come searching diligently or have I come for some other reason, some carnal reason? And looking round about upon them all, he said unto the man, Stretch forth thy hand. And he did so, and his hand was restored, whole as the other, made whole. And I know today that if you are struggling if there's something that you are struggling about spiritually here <coughs> upon the earth today, if you'll get into the presence of the Lord with it and asking him, pray, he can make you just as whole as he made this man here with the withered hand. He can make you whole spiritually. And they were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus, filled with madness. I want you to think about that. Here was a man that had just healed this gentleman that had a hand that he couldn't use. He had a great problem there, a tremendous handicap over the rest of the people. And Jesus Christ had just made him whole. And here these Pharisees and these Sadducees, scribes, they were filled with madness because Jesus Christ had healed this man's sickness, healed his withered hand, and made him whole. How would it be spiritually today? If you see Jesus Christ heal someone that may have been a great sinner, Maybe someone there that needed help bad. Maybe had lived a very bad life. But you see them repent and Jesus Christ be able to make them whole. Would you be rejoicing? And it came to pass in those days. I'm sorry. And they were... They were filled with madness and communed one with another what they might do to Jesus. And it came to pass in those days that he went out into a mountain to pray and continued all night to God in prayer. Continued all night in prayer to God. Communicating with his father. Communicating with his friend. He had a work to do. It was just beginning to start. He had about two or three more years to live here upon the earth. And that law of grace needed to be established. And there he was. Instead of out communicating with man, instead of going out trying to do something to entertain this natural body. He spent the night in prayer in a mountain. In a mountain alone. Not in a house. But alone. Where he could have full attention. 
to what he was doing. Have full attention of prayer to God, his Father. And when it was day, he called unto him his disciples, and of them he, he chose twelve, whom also he named apostles. He chose those twelve. Twelve men. He had prayed to his father that they, his father might give him the understanding of who it was that he could work with. And who it was that he would have for him to select to be able to help in promoting his kingdom here upon the earth. Simon, whom he also named Peter, and Andrew his brother. James and John, Philip and Bartholomew. Matthew and Thomas. James the son of Alphaeus. And Simon called Zelotus. And Judas the brother of James and Judas Iscariot, which also was a traitor. I want you to think about those things. He chose 12 men. And I believe 11 of them there walked close with him and continued to walk with him all the way to the end. Judas Iscariot, if you go on and you read through, there was other times where that he had things to question about why certain things were done and it said in one place that he did that, not because he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief and he had to bag. Something had gone wrong with Judas's thinking. Another place it tells about how that he had gone to betray the Lord. And as he did these things, it says, and Satan entered into Judas. Isn't that a terrible thing to think about? Here he had the opportunity, and here he was working with all the, the 11 other disciples and working with Jesus Christ. Think about that. He was working. He was a part of the 12 there that was working with Jesus, so close to him. But he went away. He let Satan deceive him. He let Satan put things in his mind and give him a desire for the things of this world greater than a desire to spend eternity with Jesus Christ and God the Father. And isn't that something to think about, to sell out our soul salvation for just a little bit of something here upon the earth. Judas did it for 30 pieces of silver. What would be the price that you might sell out your eternal salvation for? And after Judas had received that, it did not bring him the happiness that he thought he would be able to have. He didn't get that at all, but he was tormented in what he had done. And he went and he threw the money down and says, I have sinned. And he threw it down. And he went out and hanged himself. What a terrible condition to be in. He hanged himself and took his life because he had betrayed the Son of God. We've got an opportunity today, friends, to walk with the Lord, to walk as Jesus, as the disciples walked with Jesus. And we can do that. And we can be a part of it. Just as these men did, the eleven. And he came down with them and stood in the plain in the company of his disciples and a great multitude of people out of all Judea and Jerusalem and from the sea coast of Tyre and Sidon which came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. All of these people came around from different areas there to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. They knew that there was a great power there, something that they had never seen before. 
And I know that spiritually, if you have not become a part of that, your spiritual part is diseased today. And I know that the will of God is that all people should be healed. And I know that if we will listen, if we will go to where he is being preached and taught and listen and be a part of that, I know that we can be healed. And he says, and they were vexed with unclean spirits and they were healed. And I know that that can happen today, that you can be healed spiritually and become new. Do you not want that? Are you seeking it? Do you want eternal life? Do you want peace? Do you want happiness while you're here upon this earth? You know, we'll go out and we will work diligently, hard, to try to accomplish something here upon the earth that we might be able to get just a little satisfaction about here upon the earth for maybe a few days there. We will put forth great effort into it just so that we can naturally, we can have some gratification here in this natural body that we have. And the Lord's telling us, he says, I have a free gift to give to you. I've got eternal life to give to you. I've got a spirit of power to give to you if you'll just ask. And if you'll ask with a true desire to receive it and a true desire to want to keep it, he says, I'll give it to you. And it, it, then it will have a true desire to take away the carnal things of this life. The things that will so easily beset us, that will so easily, he says, set us at distance from him. He'll be able to take those things away from you. So that you don't have that desire. But you're ready then to just walk with him and be healed as these people came there. For there went virtue out of him and healed them all. Isn't that something to think about? Virtue went out of Jesus Christ, the Spirit of God, went out of him to heal those people that were there. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and he said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. You understand what he was talking about there? What was he talking about? But poor in our own mind, in our own spirit. He says when we get into that condition, then we're in a condition that we can receive the kingdom of God. We can receive that spirit of God. But as long as we are... the such as the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the scribes and all of those self-righteous people, if we are in that same mindful with that they were, we won't be in that poor spirit of ourselves. We'll be rich in the spirit of God, but we'll understand how poor that we are of our own individual self. And he says, for yours is the kingdom of God then when we get in that condition. We're in a condition that he can work with us and give us the kingdom of God. To be able then to go into that beautiful city. To be able when we stand there at that last day and to be judged, to be judged by the works that is within us. And the righteous there to be with Jesus Christ. And them already there with him. Because at that last day, we were gathered up and brought there unto him to ever be with him. Isn't that a wonderful thing to think about? <clears throat> Judged by our works, but it's the spirit of God's works within you not yours. You have to remember that we are poor. And remember 
that this flesh is weak, but that spirit is willing and that spirit is strong, friends. So strong it can overcome all things here in this, this life. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall last. Blessed are those that are hungering and thirsting after righteousness. That's what he's talking about there. For ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. And he's talking about weeping, sorrowing over that undone condition that we are, how weak that we are, and the mistakes and things that we make. He says, when you are sorry and, and weeping over your condition, and knowing that you can do nothing, you will be able to have great joy by accepting Jesus Christ and by being a part of His kingdom there. You'll be able to laugh with great joy here because you have been filled. You knew the, and you were hungering after righteousness. And you had asked and you had received. And you shall laugh. You shall be great joy within you. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil. Think about that. If they do that because you are walking with the Lord, he says, blessed are you. And he says, rejoice in that type thing. Rejoice that you are suffered, that you are Worthy to suffer shame for the name of Jesus Christ. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did their fathers and to the prophets. Just listen. Listen to what Jesus, these are words of his. And how he was encouraging his people there. In that day when you see that people are rejecting you, when they are separating themselves from you because you are walking with God. Think about that. If the world is not separating from you, if you have not separated with the world, there is a problem, friends. If you are still walking with the world, there is something wrong. Because that two spirits will not walk together. They will not mingle together. We have to put off the worldly things here in this life. And be seeking then to walk with the spiritual things, the good things here in this life. He says, and woe unto you that are rich. For ye have received your consolation. And I believe and I know that he's talking about being rich in our own mind. That we don't need to walk with Jesus. We don't have to do the things that he commands us to do. That we understand, you know, we talked about the rich man just a week or two ago. Of how and what he did. He had all his barns filled with goods. And he said, I'll just tear them down. And I'll gather more. I'll build new barns and bigger barns. And I'll store more and more. But what did he say? What was that foolish thing that he said? And this was the same logic that what our Lord was speaking about here when he says, But woe unto you that are rich. And this man was rich with the things of this world, but he was also felt like he was rich spiritually, that he had all he could do, and he just said, so take your ease. Eat, drink, and be merry. Just take your ease. You don't have to worry about anything. I've got all kind of natural things here upon the earth that you can use for many, many years. He was rich in his own mind. He was not poor spiritually. And begging the Lord, he should have been saying, Lord, what would you have for me to do with this? 
How can I use it to your honor and to your glory and not be rich spiritually in our own mind, but be rich with the Spirit of the Lord in us and knowing that we are nothing, that we are poor, and that we mourn our condition. But no, that that Spirit there, and He says, Woe unto you that are full, for you shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for you shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men speak well of you, for so did they, did their fathers to the false prophets. Now he gave them two, two, he's just talking about two different people here, friends. He's talking about the righteous and he's talking about the unrighteous. The first part there he was talking about from, a, from that 20th verse on down there to, through the 23rd, he was talking about the righteous people and how they would conduct themselves and how that they would do here upon the earth by having that spirit filled within them. The 24th verse through the 26th there, he's speaking of unrighteous people. And he says there, Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger full of your own works. And you will go lacking at the end. And he says, Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. And if all men, if the world is all speaking well of you, then something there is wrong, friends. You need to be careful with that. We all need to be careful with it. Because if we are walking with the Lord and, to, and doing His will, it will go against things of this world and there will it will go against the teachings of people of this world and they will not have good things to say about you because your works your teachings will condemn the things of the world but I say unto you which hear love your enemies do good to them that hate you bless them that curse you Pray for them which despitefully use you, and unto him that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee, and of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. Just what he's talking about here in all these verses is put our faith and trust in Jesus Christ and let him direct us in all things. Pray for your enemies. Love your enemies. Do good to them that you might help them to get out of that lost condition. Bless them that curse you. Don't go out and try to retaliate against them. He says, vengeance is mine. Vengeance belongeth to the Lord. For if you love them which love you, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. As our works, look around you. Is your works, is my works nothing different? From the sinners, nothing different from the world. That's what he was trying to get across to these people. As your works, if you are following the law of Jesus Christ, the law of grace, your works will be different from the sinners, from the people of this world, from the unrighteousness there. Your work will be different from that. And if you do good to them which do good to you, what thank have you? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom you hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. Again, he's saying don't just hold this spiritual life that you have right within yourself. He says, be ready to help, be ready to give, be ready to teach others so that they can receive it 
and don't expect anything in return for what you have done. But love ye your enemies and do good and lend, hoping for nothing again, and your reward shall be great, and you shall be the children of the highest. For he, for he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. He will, his mercy will extend here upon the earth for them, just as his mercy is with God. He will give them the things that they need here upon the earth. But he says, Be ye therefore merciful as your Father also is merciful. But that mercy of the unrighteous will end. And the wrath of God will be rained out upon them. But that mercy of God, that charity that he has, that he will pour out upon us, will stay with the righteous. And they will never lose it. The righteous will maintain that and keep it throughout eternity. Judge not, and you shall not be judged. Condemn not, and you shall not be condemned. Forgive, and you shall be forgiven. Now, I want you to listen carefully to what he's talking about. And I think that we need to be real careful of how we understand these things. He says, judge not, and you shall not be judged. And I believe he's talking about there, judge, don't judge other people by your righteousness. Because there is nothing that is good within us. But he says this. He says, by their fruits ye shall know them. And I know that that's what we need to be looking for in all things. And letting his word, his word judge. It will judge you and it will judge others. He says, condemn not and you shall not be condemned. Forgive and ye shall be forgiven. Forgive. Have that mind to forgive others. He says, as I have forgiven you. And think about these things. When we talk and we see these things, we can just bring to mind parables that our Lord has spoken of here in this book that we're reading. And think about the parable that he gave us of how that this man... This wealthy man went out and he had someone there that owed him a great sum of money. And he went to him and he asked for it. And he said, I don't have it. And he grabbed him and he was going to put him into prison and sell him, sell his family, sell all that he had to take care of the debt that he owed. And the man started pleading with him, have mercy on me and just give me an opportunity and I'll pay you all. And the rich man had mercy upon him. And he just forgave him the whole debt. Think about that. Forgave it to him. Said, you don't owe it to me anymore. You are free. I'll have mercy upon you and I'll set you free. And that's what Jesus Christ will do. We are great debtors. And the wrath of God is there and he will call for that debt to be paid. That debt will have to be paid, friends, for your sins and for my sins. I want you to think about that. That debt has to be paid. Now either you will pay for it in eternal hell or go to Jesus Christ that has already paid that debt for you if you will go ask him to just relieve you of that. He has paid it. But you've got to go ask him to take care of it for you. And go to his father and pray to the father for you. Think about that. That debt has to be paid. It can't just go unpaid. Either you'll pay for it 
if he, with eternal damnation or either you'll use the payment that Jesus has made. The credit is there. All you've got to do is go ask for it. The debt has been paid. The debit is there. Use it so that you might have <laughs> eternal life. Give and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall men give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. It says just do in your daily walk. Just do these things. He says give and it shall be given to you. Give your love. Give your time. Give whatever it is. Give your forgiveness. And think about what went on. After that man had been forgiven his, at great debt, he went out and he saw someone that owed him a small debt. And he grabbed hold of him and the man cried for mercy and he wouldn't do it and he cast him into prison. <coughs> and his Lord found out about it and what did he do? But he was wroth with the way he had done. He had not forgiven as he had done. And he cast him then into prison. And if we don't forgive as our Lord has forgiven us, we will be, there will be no difference. And he says we have to do that if we are a part of his kingdom. If we are a part of his church, we have to forgive others just as he has forgiven us. He says then, it will be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Think about those things when we measure something out. Sometimes we pour something and it runs over. We've got so much there that we were filling something up and it literally runs over our container and that's the way the Lord is with us. He has so much mercy and so much love to give us that it is there and it, will, it is just running over. We've got all that we need, he says. And it's shaken together. Shall men give your bosom. For with the same measure that you meet with all it shall be measured to you again. And that's spiritually. And I think that naturally he works with us also in those things. But that spiritual part. He says with the measure that you meet. With the, the desire that we have. And that how we walk with Jesus Christ, he says, it shall be measured to you again. Just as in some one place, the man came to him and wanted to be healed. I believe he was maybe blind. I don't remember exactly, but he came to be healed. And the Lord told him, he says, be it unto you so as your faith is. And he was healed. And that's kind of the way I look at these things here. He says, for with the same measure that you meet with all shall it be measured to you again. So however we walk with the Lord, how whatever we do with those things, he says it will be given to us. And he spake a parable unto them, can the blind lead the blind? Shall they not both fall into the ditch? Think about that. And here he's just giving them some instructions. He's talking to them about the truth. Now he's saying, now if you want to truly understand, you'd better be where someone is teaching the truth. And it is someone that has eyes to see, spiritual eyes to see, and spiritual ears to hear. He says, can the blind lead the blind? If you did not have eyesight, would you want to go get someone that was blind to say, come and carry me down to the store, or carry me down to town? It would never work. If you two blind people got into a car to try to drive off, you would immediately go into the ditch or hit something. It, you would not get there at all. So we know that the blind cannot lead the blind. And spiritually, the blind spiritually cannot lead 
the blind, and we are all blind. Remember that when we came here. So you can't receive that sight from someone that is blind. Shall they not both fall into the ditch, he said. Go to where you see the Spirit being strong and the Spirit full of light so that you can have that, those eyes to see and not fall into that ditch spiritually. And I know that those things have taken place throughout time since Christ was here. He has warned us numerous over and over times and in the Bible here, he warns about being deceived and he says, be not deceived. So let's be careful with these things, friends. The disciple is not above his master, but everyone that is perfect shall be as his master. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceiveth not the beam that is in thine own eye? And what he was talking to the people about is be careful that you aren't looking around and trying to find some fault, some small fault in someone that is close to you or in someone that you see and you're looking and trying to find some small fault with that. When you have a beam in your own eye, you have tremendous faults within yourself. He said, clean yourself up. Look at our own individual conditions, friends. And why beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but perceiveth not the beam that is in thine own eye? Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite! Cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. And I believe there was a lot of those things going as, as he, he's been talking here and teaching. And a lot of it he was teaching to those Pharisees and those scribes, all of those people who were self-righteous, and he was just wanting them to understand and teaching them all about how that they needed to forgive and how they, he, had for, he would forgive them if they came to them and how that they were blind and how that they could not lead those people that were blind also. They needed to get eyes to see so that they could help the blind to see. Now he said, now you need to get that moat out of your eye or that beam out of your eye so that you can help your friend to get on track also. We need to be searching. We need to walk in, our, in his work with his spirit in our body here upon the earth. Either how canst thou say to thy brother, Brother, let me pull out the mote that is in thine eye, when thou thyself beholdest not the beam that is in thine eye. And what does he say about that? He says, you are a hypocrite if that's the case. Cast out first the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. And I want to be able to be clearly. I want to have clear spiritual vision, friends. And I know beyond the shadow of a doubt that our Lord and Savior can give us clear spiritual vision. He has not made these promises and then not keep them. He has not told us of these things what he would do for us. He says, and then thou shalt see clearly to pull out the mote that is in thy brother's eye. For a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. Neither doth a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Now, I want you to think carefully on what he said. And again, remember, this is just the words of the Lord that I am reading. You can take it however you want it. But he says, for a good tree bringeth not forth corrupt fruit. Now, when we look around and we see people proclaiming to be a Christian, proclaiming to be someone walking with the Lord, but you see things going on in their life there that is not in accordance with the truths of this Bible. You know that there's something wrong. That is not judging. 
He says, by their fruits ye shall know them. And he says, that good tree will not bring forth corrupt fruits. He says, and neither can a, tr a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. For every tree is known by his fruit. For of thorns men do not gather figs, nor of a bramble bush gather they grapes. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And we've talked about those things so much, of how that we've got to have and be a new man. And that's what we've talked about here today, that we've got to be made new so that the good works can come out of us. And that's what our Lord and Savior was just bringing to the attention of these people. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. Good works comes from his heart. Why? Because he's been made new. He, has a, he is a new man, a new spirit. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. That man, that evil man, he cannot bring forth good works. His heart, out of his heart, bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. I want you to listen to that carefully. The abundance of your heart, your mouth speaketh. Can their good water come out of a bad fountain, out of a bad <coughs> spring, or whatever it might be? No. And that's what he's saying here. And when you hear people, someone proclaiming of how that they are so righteous and what they are so doing, and then in the next few moments or the next little while, you hear them talking and their language is not upbuilding to the Lord's work at all. Cursing and talking about things that would not be a building to the Lord. He says, for the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaketh. That's what his heart or that's what your heart can be. It's what is coming out of our mouth. And why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things that I say? Listen carefully to that, friends. Why call you me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? We've got to walk with him. If we're going to be a part of his kingdom, we've got to walk in his ordinances. He makes it very plain and clear of that. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. These two next few verses here, we have, that has been brought over and over and over to our attention. And I'm wondering, are we getting it? Do we understand it as we should? Undoubtedly, we don't. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded on, upon a rock. Now I hope, does everybody in here today understand what the Lord is talking about there? I want us all to understand that and to listen carefully about it. He is like a man which built a house. Now that's the ones he says that hears his sayings, hears the commandments, listens, has ears to hear, and he listens to the things that Jesus Christ is talking to his people about, that is instructing his people. I was reading recently there, and Paul was writing to in one of the letters. And he was talking to the people about doing the things that we command you. That they should be obedient to the things that they, that Paul and the servants there that was walking with Jesus Christ, that was preaching and teaching the, the Lord's works, was telling the people how they should live their life. And he says, you need to 
listen and do the things that we command you. If it's the work of the Lord, we need to listen to that. If it's not, we better do something different. We'd better go. But if it's the Lord's work, we better adhere to it. That's what he's speaking of here. You hear my words and you do them. You are like the one you are getting, you are drawing close to the Lord. And you are drawing close enough that the power of God is available to you to cast Satan out in every situation that there is. There is nothing that Satan can overcome you with if you hear his words and you let his spirit direct you. Nothing. He says that all these things comes upon him and it could not shake it. It was founded upon a rock and that rock is Jesus Christ. And that rock, the chief cornerstone that has been rejected by so many builders, but that chief cornerstone there has been chosen by the righteous and they have chosen that to fall up on that rock and be broken and that rock not fall upon them and grind them into powder but to fall upon that rock and be broken spiritually that they might have eternal life but he that heareth and doeth not. And I want you to listen carefully and I want you to think about. We've been talking about hearing and doing his commandments. Keeping his sayings. He that heareth and doeth not. Is like a man that without a foundation. Build a house upon the earth. Against which the stream did beat vehemently. And immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. Think about that. I want you to listen carefully to it. He that heareth. Now everyone that is here today, the words have been spoken. You have heard something in your ears. Now are you going to follow what he is asking for us to how we are at, he is asking for us to live our life and to put it into his hands? He says, and he that heareth and doeth not. Now if we hear it and we get up and we go on out and we don't live the life that he has recommended for us to live, he says, this is how you are. That you've built a house without a foundation. And a house upon the earth just went out and put it out there against which the stream beat vehemently and immediately it fell. I want you to listen carefully to that. Tried to build a house, a spiritual house, and that's what he's talking about without going through Jesus Christ, without submitting totally to Jesus Christ, tried to build that, without listening to him, without doing the things that he asked for us to do. And then when Satan comes, you're an easy prey for him. It is easy for him to just get you, get your mind off on to the things of the world. Get them off of the things above, off of that treasure above. And he says then, that house will fall. And what does he talk about then? He says, and immediately it fell. And the ruin of that house was great. The ruin of that house, that spiritual house, can never be rebuilt if we're part of that. 
But I want you to know that if we will hear his words and then do them, do them, hear his words and be a part of his kingdom here on the earth, you can be strong and you can stand throughout eternity with Jesus Christ. You can stand with him and have no more sorrow, no more pain, no more suffering, but to be as we read about a while ago, to have that great joy that he said. I want to go back and read, starting at that 20th verse in this same chapter. And he lifted up his eyes on his disciples and he said, Blessed are ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Now we've read a lot today and we've talked a lot. How do you feel about that today? Are you in the kingdom of God? Blessed are ye that hunger now. For ye shall be filled. Have you been filled today? Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Have you been mourning your spiritual condition? Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach ye, and cast out your name as evil for the name for the, for the Son of Man's sake. Are you walking so close to the Lord that the people of this world don't want to have anything to do with you? Are you walking so close to, to them, to the Lord, that His Spirit is radiating Ask yourself these questions. And he says, Rejoice ye and leap in that day for joy. For behold, your reward is great in heaven. For in like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. Keep that in mind as we go home today and as we start out this new week. Keep these things in mind. And let's do what we can to walk with him. That we might be strong in the spirit. And be ye therefore merciful as your father is merciful. Remember those things. Keep them in mind. And let's walk with him and let's be full of joy in his kingdom here upon the earth. Be full of peace knowing that we've got eternal life within us if we'll just hold out until the end. And holding out until the end is nothing more but just following the commandments of Jesus Christ, doing the things that he asked for us to do, hearing his words and listening to his commandments. I believe that Jesus Christ there, as he, we read in the very beginning, when he went out and he prayed to his father all night, he was communicating with him. And I know we can communicate with him. We can have those ears to hear, friends. And eyes to see spiritually. Now let's get that beam out of our eye. Take it to the Lord. And let's get those beams out of our eyes so that we can see clearly to walk in our, on our journey to that celestial city. To where we can enter into there forever to be with Christ Jesus our Lord. We'll sing today number 312.
just as I am. And there may be someone that might understand that they need to come to the Lord just as they are to surrender unto him and to be a part of his work here upon the earth. And you can do so by coming forward as we sing number 312. <laughs> That song, Just As I Am, without one plea, and that's the condition that we've got to get into, that we're willing to go to him on his terms, without <coughs> one plea for ourselves. But that thy blood, but that thy blood was shed for me, 
That's the plea. That's where we need to go to him, saying, Lord, you have paid that debt with your blood, and you shed it for me. And that thou biddest me come to thee. And that's what we've got to have, the truths of him. And then in that last verse it says, Just as I am, thou wilt receive, he will receive you. Wilt welcome, pardon, cleanse, and relieve. Relieve us of our sin. Relieve us of our burden. Because thy promise I believe. Because the promise, the promises that we've read, the promises that we talk about, I believe them. And I know that he'll receive us. O Lamb of God, I come. Let that be in our mind throughout this upcoming week. That just as we are, he will receive us. Let us pray. To God the Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord, thank you for all that you have given to us today. I know that those who are hungering and thirsting after righteousness have been able to receive that today. And all of those that have heard thy word, let them hear it and let them build upon that solid rock at foundation of Jesus Christ our Lord. And don't let Satan come and take it out of our mind. And don't let the thorns and the thistles grow up and choke it out. Don't let the things of this world come up and choke it out. And let us... Let the roots go deep, Lord, so that we can stand against Satan. Let us give good ground to walk with you. I know that if we'll furnish the good ground, you will furnish the seed. And you will give the increase to all of those that seek you. Thank you for what you have done, Lord. And be with everyone in the upcoming days that your will be done. Amen.